Hello and thank you for tuning in to this episode of Animals in Ames. My name is Ron Edwards. I'm the Animal Control Supervisor here for the Ames Animal Shelter and Animal Control Program. Our first guest with us today is Jessica. Yes, Jessica Rabbit. Um, I know, not very original. Uh, staff named this Bunny Jessica. Uh, Jessica actually came into us as a stray um, running loose out here in the city. And what we're thinking or guessing happened, because we haven't had anybody come forward, is that somebody thought that uh, Jessica could live with the wild bunnies and fend for herself. Um, so they just decided to let her go. She's obviously been cared for. Uh, she's uh, well socialized. She's um, fine with animal handling and um, just does a really good job and a beautiful bunny, a Flemish giant. So it is one of the largest breeds of rabbits. Um, and she is a good sized bunny. Look at those ears. Those can, I think those can tune into uh, radio and uh, other parts of the world. Um, but just a beautiful bunny here. Um, loves her veggies. Um, and of course, those are so important to her diet. Um, but Jessica, again, is a Flemish uh, giant. She will be spayed before she is adopted. Um, and just want to remind people out there that these domesticated bunnies cannot thrive and survive on their own out in the wild. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of animals that think that they are um, something that you want to eat. Um, so there's a lot of critters out there, wild animals and loose dogs and things like that that could uh, you know, really harm a bunny like this, even though Jessica is a good sized bunny. Um, she's not going to be able to fend for herself. Uh, if someone were to, or something were to try and attack her. So it's very, very important that these animals, if you can no longer care for them, that you don't just let them loose. Um, they cannot survive on their own out there. Yeah, there's a lot of grass to eat, but they need a lot more than just grass, um, which is so important. The reason why we give them these uh, leafy vegetables here that they're getting uh, vitamin C, they're getting plenty of nutrients. Um, they're getting their Timothy hay. Um, that is so important to their diet um, and the main part of their diet and that roughage to help their body digest um, the food that they're taking in. Of course, there's so many other dangers out there um, in the wild um, for these guys and just the excessive temperatures, whether it's the extreme cold or extreme heat that we experience here in uh, Ames. Um, it just doesn't make it a safe place for Jessica or any other domestic bunny like that. Um, cottontails are much more um, equipped to handle that environment and even with them they still don't uh, live very long out in the wild. So if you're interested in adopting uh, Jessica the rabbit, uh, check out rabbit.org. It's an excellent website that gives lots of information about how to care for these very special creatures. Um, they are considered exotic pets and um, certain vets uh, will have expertise in caring for them. So not every vet feels comfortable or will actually treat or look at um, exotic pets. So that's really important to make sure you do all your homework. Uh, find out where your bunny can go for uh, vet care um, and just in general how to care for them. Here at the shelter you can see that Jessica is in a single uh, puppy exercise pin um, here. So this is, provides a um, decent amount of space for Jessica but what we'd really recommend for her is to have at least two of these that are connected together that would give her a lot of space to run. Um, again because she is such a large breed bunny um, she needs a lot of space to stretch out and when she stretches out she takes up a whole lot of space inside that uh, exercise pin there. So um, again doing some research about the breed uh, again, a Flemish giant doing some research on rabbit.org <clears throat> will help make this a successful um, adoption. And we want to make sure that Jessica finds an appropriate place that will keep her indoors, keep her safe, and never put her out to uh, be uh, out there living in the wild because that's not where these domestic bunnies should be. So if you're interested in Jessica, come on down to the shelter. Um, we'll be accepting applications. She's actually available on Friday, May 24th. And our next guest today is Dory. And I'm going to tell you right now, Dory's going to want to tell you her story while I'm trying to talk about her because she is just one of those really talkative folks. <laughs> Dory is a year and a half old. Come here, girl. Come here, girl. Come here. Come here. She is a year and a half old. She is a purebred beagle. 
um, and again just has lots of energy as you can see here. Um, unfortunately Dory was a frequent visitor here with us and uh, for whatever reason the owner decided at this time that they're not going to come back and pick her up. So now we're going to put her up for adoption and, and thank you for that kiss. We're going to put her up for adoption. Uh, we're going to get her spayed before she goes home. Um, but she is just a bundle of energy here. Aren't you? Aren't you? Um, so we're going to make sure that the home that she finds is going to keep her nice and safe and secure inside. And uh, yes, yes. Tell him your story. Tell him your story. Yes, I know. Tell him that story. Uh, but she is just a bundle of joy and love here. Um, she has lived with uh, children. Um, typically, this breed is really good with kids. Um, so we think that you know having a uh, having some kids in the home would be a great place for her. But of course, you want to make sure that the kids uh, uh, are able to secure the door and not let her come out. Uh, beagles are known for following the scent so if they get out they'll want to run and try to follow that scent whatever that scent may be um, but dory is just a really sweet little girl here she's on the smaller side for a lot of beagles um, but just a sweet girl um, again she needs to be spayed before she goes home but um, you know and a beagle is not a dog for everybody so uh, as you heard she's a, she can be a little vocal um, so sometimes you know apartment living things like that may not be the best environment for her so we're going to start accepting applications for her um, she is available for adoption now but we still have to get her scheduled for her spay surgery um, and again she's a year and a half purebred beagle available here for adoption at the Ames Animal Shelter so if you're interested in, in Dory come on down here and take a look at her and and meet this very very sweet girl she's a she's just a handful here but it needs some additional training but I think she would make an excellent pet for a family that's out there looking for a pet um, especially if you have kids I think she'd be a great match so come on down and meet Dory at the Ames Animal Shelter And our next guest today has just as much energy um, as uh, Dory does. This is Gizmo. Uh, Gizmo was actually surrendered to us in unfortunate circumstances. Um, you'll see here that uh, Gizmo has also a lot of energy. Um, Gizmo unfortunately made contact with uh, um, the owner's child um, and the tooth just nicked the face, um, so caused a, a puncture wound. Um, not a serious bite by any means, it was absolutely an accident according to the, the previous owner, um, but they were just uh, concerned about that behavior. Um, you know, Cocker Spaniels are not always known for being the absolute best breed with, uh, with children. Um, we do believe that this was definitely an accident. We've seen no negative behaviors with Gizmo at all. Um, he is a neutered male, uh, purebred Cocker Spaniel. He's about nine months old. Um, as you see, lots and lots of energy. Uh, recently groomed, um, that's very important for this breed is to keep them groomed, uh, keep their ears clean. Um, they're prone sometimes to ear infections, so very important to keep those clean. Um, because of the incident with the small child, we're thinking that uh, Gizmo shouldn't be in a home with children, anything um, younger than 13 years of age. Uh, we are accepting applications uh, for Gizmo. Uh, he will actually be available starting on Saturday, May 25th. So we'll start accepting applications for him. Uh, but we want to make sure that he goes to the right home, the right environment. Um, he is just, look at that little nub there, wagon. Um, he is just an excited young dog um, that needs some training. You know, as with all young dogs, they have that, uh, they need that puppy, uh, those puppy classes and obedience training to make them good canine citizens here. So, and again, because of the previous bite um, that he had, and again, uh, we, we do, <laughs> see, um, we, we do believe that that was absolutely an accident and not any kind of bad behavior um, on Gizmo's uh, part here. Um, he is definitely, like I said, just a lot of energy. You can see him just bouncing all over here. Um, but just a fun dog um, appears to like other dogs really well um, so if you have another dog and or uh, you're just looking for your first time dog um, Gizmo might be a good choice for you um, we definitely would ask people to look up the breed uh, again a Cocker Spaniel um, they do have specific grooming needs and other needs 
that you want to make sure that you're aware of to make sure that uh, you're giving Gizmo the absolute best chances um, at becoming a, a good part of the, the, the family and just being a, a great dog to live with here. So you can just see he is just so excited to be on camera. So come on down and meet Gizmo. We'll start accepting applications and you'll be able to see him starting Saturday, May 25th. That's our show for today. Remember, that's just a sampling of the animals we have available for adoption. We didn't show you any cats, but of course we have lots of cats to adopt here at the Ames Animal Shelter. So if you want to check out our website, which is very simple, amesanimalshelter.org, uh, you can click on the uh, cats available for adoption, dogs available for adoption, uh, or the small animals available for adoption. Although Jessica's not small, she'll appear on the small animals for adoption uh, when she's available, which will be on Friday. Um, you could also see the lost animals at the shelter by clicking on those links as well. So amesanimalshelter.org. Uh, always keep an eye on our Facebook page, uh, again also Ames Animal Shelter, uh, for news and information uh, about what's happening here at the shelter, special adoptions, uh, special recognition of donors that help us out so often. Um, we can't thank them enough for all of their help and doing everything that they can to uh, support the Ames Animal Shelter and the animals that we care for here. Uh, we couldn't do the work that we do without you guys. So I want to say a special thanks to all the people who donate here to us and especially our partners here in the community. The uh, Lincoln Center High V. I I mentioned that we had the uh, seventh annual wine and dine event. Uh, they raised over $6,700 here for the Ames Animal Shelter. So they met and exceeded their goal. And just a very special thank you again to Kevin, the wine and spirits manager for putting on this amazing event. Uh, all uh, vegetarian and vegan food, um, uh, great wine, uh, just a great event to help the animals here at the shelter. We also recently had the CNK uh, Shelter Shindig where we partner with the Story County Animal Shelter to attend event, an event where they have uh, vaccinations. Uh, our partner vet, Somerset Vet Hospital was there giving rabies vaccinations at low cost. Uh, there was also microchips from the uh, Boone uh, Vet Hospital. Uh, there was some nail trimming and just other events happening at that event and we're so thankful for CNK for holding that and supporting the Ames Animal Shelter as well as the Story County Shelter. So it's a great partnership to be able to work with the Story County Shelter. Um, we're all in this business together to help homeless animals and um, they do all they can to place their animals there and so are we. So if you don't find an animal you're looking at here at the Ames Animal Shelter, go to the Story County Shelter, see what they have or maybe the Boone Area Humane Society or the Animal Rescue League. There's so many wonderful um, pet adoption shelters here in Iowa. Uh, we want you to go to those places before you go to puppy mills or, uh, or pet stores. Uh, you can definitely find some wonderful pets at these shelters. Um, the Fort Dodge is another shelter that has uh, Almost Home Humane Society is another agency that just does wonderful work and has lots of animals to choose from. So go on down to those shelters and adopt a family pet. Thank you for watching.